and stairs. <laughs> We present Tony Hancock, Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes and Kenneth Williams in... Hancock's Half Hour. Mr Hancock, what a delightful meal this is. I really must congratulate you. Oh, my dear vicar, it's a pleasure. So glad you could come to dinner. We don't often get the opportunity of entertaining a member of the clergy in my humble abode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's most gratifying to converse with one who is so up on the theology and ecclesiastical chat as your good self. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, everybody? Uh, yeah. eh? uh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Most charming. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do enjoy the personal contact with my parishioners. I try and visit them in their homes at least once a year. And why not? <laughs> Must cut down on the old grub bills at home, I always say. <laughs> yes, well, uh, it isn't the prime reason for my visits. I no, 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 of course uh, not. It was just a little joke on my part. <laughs> I am a comedian, you know. Oh, yes. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but do please tell me more about your work in Africa. Uh, if you're sure I'm not boring you. No, 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 not at all. We'd all be most elevated. <laughs> Bill, Bill, Bill. Um, 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 uh, why, uh, is he gone? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, dear me, was that your foot? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I must apologize to my friend, Vicar. He drops off. Very unfortunate head wound he received in the war. Yeah, a waff sloshed me with yes, a bottle of... Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes, a waff. Yes, a waff. Yes, a West African hussar, that is. <laughs> Accidentally hit him with his spear. Terrible blow. Terrible blow. Oh, uh, yes, the war. You weren't living here during the war, were you, Mr. Hancock? No, I applied for overseas posting as soon as the war started. Ah, uh, how brave. Uh, where did you apply for? Bermuda. <laughs> oh, I was there all during the war. Terrible hazards we underwent. Men dropping like flies. Rum poisoning and sunstroke. It was terrible. <laughs> Saw a U-boat surface once, but we all hid in the hills and he went away. <laughs> but it shook us for a minute, I may say. Yes, it would do. It did. Uh, what about you, Mr. James? Are you in the forces? To me? Uh, you were in uniform? Oh, yes, yes. Had arrows all over it. <laughs> Yes, yes, it was the dress uniform of the Sherwood Yeomanry. Oh. Foot regiment with a very fine tradition. My efforts were, of course, confined to the home front. Yes, indeed, yes. It must have been quite nasty here at times. Yes, it was. We had many narrow escapes, as I suppose you must have had. Oh, my word, yes. I remember one when they threatened to send us back to England. <laughs> Panic right to the island. Uh, more rice pudding and evaporated milk, Vicar. Oh, no, thank you, my dear. I can't stand the sight of rice. We get so much of it outside the church, you know. Where do you think we got this? <laughs> Ow! Oh, I'm sorry, was that your other foot? <laughs> well, would you mind if I had your portion? No, no, not at all. I love rice pudding. True, true. Uh, She's always got a bucket full brewing on the stove. <laughs> Yes, we suffered a lot of damage in these parts with the bombs, you know. Ah, yes, the air raids. I know just what you must have gone through. I went through it myself. We had a leaflet raid on the island once. Shocking damage. <laughs> Quite a lot of the chaps got it with bundles that didn't open. <laughs> we'd been Americans, we'd have got the purple art. No doubt. <laughs> They, they dropped quite a few unexploded bombs in this area, I don't know. Is that a fact? Yes. Mm. They, they, found, they found an unexploded bomb only a fortnight ago. That's half a mile from here, I believe. Yes, I read about it. They uh, had the bomb disposal squad down. That's right. Oh, brave chaps. I was in the bomb disposal squad in Bermuda. I will remember ten of us were called out one night to dismantle a firework. <laughs> it was a tricky beast, a jumping jack, it was. We... Didn't know where it was going to go. Still, we kept in our tanks with the hoods down, so we were all right. <laughs> a piece of cabinet pudding, Vicar. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Stone me. No wonder you don't sleep. 
Great heavy pudding lying on your stomach. If you come walking past my room tonight with your arms stretched out in front of you, I don't care what they say about waking them up, I'll yell right down your ear hole. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Vicar. She's a bit of a handful, as you can see. Well, I need a drink after that. Sid, pour us out a toddy. Done left, boy. We drunk it all. Oh, well, I'll just have to go down into the wine cellar and get another bottle. Of course, I've got crates down there, all vintage, you know. Is it old vintage? Oh, no, swipe me, yes, yes. Some of it's over six weeks old. <laughs> the good stuff, that is. The potato wine, it's a bit young. A fortnight ago, it was still in the ground. I'll <laughs> uh, see what we've got for you. Come, William, to the wine cellar. <laughs> William? Oh. The wine cellar. Oh, hey, hey, is he gone? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Wait till I get him down in the cellar. <laughs> You'll have a bottle of grave across your head, mate. <laughs> Excuse me, Vicar. Sydney, you'll entertain the Vicar while we're corking the wine, won't you? Certainly, certainly, mate. Tell me, Vicar, there's a man interested in church architecture. How much lead do you reckon there is on that big Gothic one round the corner? Hey, tub. Tub! What do you want me to go down to the cellar for? There's no wine down there. There never was. Don't give me that. You've got something down there. I know that. Every time you go down to fill the coal scuttle up, you come back reeking. Yeah, well, that's mine, Tub. It's all in a good cause. What have you got? There's a bottle of Arab Burgundy you picked up at Port Said on the way over. Mm, I bet that's strong. Strong? They use cast iron corks. <laughs> That'll be all right. As long as we keep the label turned our way, he won't know. Now, go on. You go down first, because I'm frightened of the dark. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you? Right in front of you. Well, let me hold your coat. I don't like coming down here. How many more steps? I'm on the eighth one. Eight from twelve, that's three left. Why? There's one missing. <laughs> Which one? Well, feel around with your foot. If there's nothing there, that's the one. Uh, right, I've got it. It's the next one. Good lad. Hey, hey, are you all right, Tub? William. Didn't it occur to you that your next one wasn't my next one? <laughs> Sorry, Tub, I'll switch the light on. You'll do what? I'll switch the light on. You mean we've been falling about here in the pitch black and there's a light down here? Yeah, I had it put in when I had to keep coming down for the coal. Well, why didn't you tell me? I forgot. You forgot. Oh, I'm sorry, Tub. Never mind, William, we all make mistakes. I made one once. When? The day you walked in front of me, Carl, and I pulled up. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Now, help me up and put that light on. Ah, that's better. So, this is the cellar. I've never seen it before. Haven't you? Well, let me show you around. That's the floor you're standing on, and there are the walls. <laughs> and don't tell me that thing above me is the roof. <laughs> hey, are you sure you haven't been down here before? <laughs> no, no. I used to work for an estate agent. They taught me all about it. It's very roomy, isn't it? Almost as big as a bedroom. Yeah. Now, you can move your bed down here tomorrow. <laughs> now, I'm letting your room. What's that up there in the ceiling? Oh, that's, that's the manhole. You remember when you bought the place, it was just a jagged hole and you put a cover on it. Oh, yes. Well, what's that thing stuck in the floor underneath it? What thing? That thing. The big metal thing with the fins on it. What's this chalk writing on the side? 1942, Gottstraf, England, Heil Hitler. <laughs> is this yours? No, I don't know what it is. I just use it to strike me matches when I'm having a smoke. <laughs> but look, there's, there's great big dents all over it. Oh, yeah, that was me. I was trying to break it open with a pickaxe. <laughs> you hit it with a pickaxe? You fool! Fancy doing a thing like that. Not ours, you might have damaged it. <laughs> Somebody might come and ask for it back. Oh, no, 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 Tub, they can't. 1942. If it's not claimed within six months, it becomes the property of the people who find it. It's ours, Tub. Oh, good. I've always wanted a metal thing with fins on. <laughs> Buffoon. Buffoon. <laughs> Buffoon. <laughs> what good is... Do you mind? What good is it to us? 
dig it up and see how much you can get from the rag and bone man on it. Oh, well, you can't. Oh, I've tried. It's embedded too far on the ground. Oh, you two. Where's the wine? My tongue's hanging out up here. Can I give you a hand to decant it? No, no, no. Stay there, Vicar. Don't bother to come down. We're, we're just trying to select a bottle to suit your palate. Oh, dear, no. Oh, he's down. Oh, no. Good <laughs> heavens. What? Stand back. What is it? What's wrong? Over there, sticking out of the floor, an unexploded bomb. Yes, it's ours. We're claiming it. Treasure trove, you know. <laughs> it's a what? A bomb, an unexploded bomb. You mean... Yeah. I've been... Lived down... Since... Here... In... Down... All these years. I'm afraid so. What? Here. Down in it. All of Sit. Sit. With me upstairs. Uh, uh. Oh. I don't think Mr. Hancock is feeling well. Perhaps you ought to sit down. Yeah, come on, Tub, sit down, have a rest. Come on, old son, over here. Thank you. Not on the bomb! <laughs> Go and reserve me a bunk in the underground station. We're getting out of here. Come, come, come now. This is no time to panic. It's a good enough time for me, mate. I'm off. <laughs> Oh, look here, we really ought to put something round it to take the blast in case it goes off. Oh, the treacle pudding's ready. <laughs> there you are. Put that round it. <laughs> a hydrogen bomb wouldn't get through a treacle pudding. <laughs> You've got to be careful now. The slightest tremor might set it off. How much do you reckon it weighs, Victor? Uh, it's a very large one. I should say it's a 2,000 pounder. 2,000 pound. Let's see. Scrap metal 15 bob underweight. <laughs> Iron 75 bob. You reckon there's any lead in it? No, no, no. Oh, shame. That's uh, 112 to 2003 Cali 1. That's 44 plus cartridge. I'll give you 25 bob for it, Hancock. Sid, how can you start bashing at a time like this? A deadly high explosive weapon. I can go up any minute and both. 27 and 6. <laughs> Sold. You're wasting valuable time. We must get to a telephone and call in the army. Yes, of course. Bill, I've got 27 and 6 invested here. You stay in the cellar and mind it. Supposing it goes off? Well, catch as many bits as you can. <laughs> Hello, Fred. This is our lucky day. They found an old unexploded German bomb in Hancock's cellar. What do you mean, so what? Use your loaf, boy. Haven't you always said if we could pull Hancock's house down, what a wonderful used car lot we could make? Well, and if we play our cars right, we don't have to pull it down. Look, there's two things that can happen. One, the army gets the bomb out and Hancock's got a house. Or two, they explode it and Hancock hasn't got a house and we've got a used car lot. Somehow, I think the army's going to have trouble with that bomb. Start buying cars, son. Start buying them. <laughs> army to get here. Well, don't be impatient. It's been 12 hours since we phoned the war office. I'm fed up with camping out on the pavement. Remind me to write to the council. Put in the street lamps out at 11 o'clock. It's not right. I climb up the lamp post, I plug my electric razor in, <laughs> halfway up my sideboards and they switch them all off. <laughs> Why don't you spare a thought for poor Bill keeping guard over it? Oh, he's all right. Danger is only feared by people of high intelligence and imagination. He'll be snoring away, dreaming of cowboys and Indians. He doesn't know what it's all about. Hello, the army, they're here. All right, Jeff, all out. It's the big. <laughs> Look lively and we'll be home in time for breakfast, eh? <laughs> Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Get the arc light set up. Yes, sir. Right, Jeff, cordon off the area, 200 yards. Good evening. Go away, please. This is not a sideshow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Can't be responsible for civilians. This is an army share, Roger. No, no, no. Anthony, Anthony Hancock. <laughs> Roger's my brother. No, there won't be many people who know about that. <laughs> We don't want civilian chappies cluttering up the target area. Eh, what? Right here, go home to bed. That's a good chap, eh, what? What's the point of going home to bed when I'm likely to be blown out of it? I just wouldn't be comfortable. Oh, oh I see. It's your house. The little beggar's hiding in. Yes, that's right, yes. Oh. 23 railway cutting. Oh, bang on us. Oh, oh. Now, you can come and share us. Where did you? Not me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> had enough of it during the war. I did my bit. Overseas, I was. Really, sir? I didn't realize you were an old war horse. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, young fellow, my lad, I saw it all. France, North Africa, Italy, Tripoli, Japan, Malaya, Singapore, I saw it all. He was the projectionist at the Camp Newsreel Theatre. <laughs> oh. Well, we've got work to do. Evening, all. How's it going? Oh, not another civvy. Now, where is the bomb? In the cellar, and you take care of my house. You'll have to blow it up, mate. You'll never get it out. Oh, no, sir. We never detonate unless it's absolutely necessary. Oh. Now, we always prefer to remove a bomb intact and explode it somewhere else. Very difficult to get it. If I were you, I'd knock the house down. Run one of your tanks through it. You mind your own business. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. You get that bomb out without disturbing so much as a brick. Don't intend to spend the rest of my life kipping on a corporation pavement. <laughs> With me beard at the mercy of the electricity department, not this day. <laughs> Tell me, sir, you sound as if you know something about bomb disposal. Oh, yeah, I've had loads of experience. Been working with high explosives for years. Oh, absolutely first us. Well, I should be very grateful for any assistance, because quite frankly, this is my first bomb. <laughs> Get away. Yes. I'm with the catering corps, actually. <laughs> I knew it that as well. I've only been in a week. <laughs> because all the older chaps didn't want to come. You know, their D mobs coming up shortly and they didn't want to take a chance. Uh, they asked me if I'd come. <laughs> Wish I knew something about it, eh, what? <laughs> well, I think it's very brave of you. Oh, it's a bit of sport, isn't it? It's a bit of a laugh. <laughs> now, listen, Mush. Uh, mushers. <laughs> I refuse to have amateurs tampering with my bombs. I want a fully paid up bomb man. Oh, don't be a spoil sport. You've all got to get experience. I mean, that's good to sort of spread your wings a bit. If you touch that bomb, we'll all be spreading our wings. <laughs> Don't worry. This gentleman has promised to help out if I go wrong. Certainly, mate. The thing to do is evacuate the old road and blow the house up. Never. You can't touch that house. It's protected. That house is of historic interest. I say, is it real? Yes, it is. That is the finishing line of the Cheam Pancake Race, that is. <laughs> you blow it up, mate. It's an eyesore. It's an architectural disgrace to the borough. Lowers the tone of the old district. What we could do with there is a nice big used car lot. Go on, boy, blow it up. You can't blow it up. There is a human being inside there. Is there? Well, I say a human being. <laughs> He's on the voters' list. Well, of course, that does alter things. I think we'd better have a look at the beast and size up the situation. Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Did you bring my swagger stick? Yes, sir. Good. I might have to poke the wretched thing a bit. <laughs> oh, and put the duck boards across the garden. I've got my swears on. <laughs> Forward, chap. <laughs> Down in the cellar. See that? You never get your cranes down there, boy. You blow it up, son. Ooh, knock the house down. Get it out. I don't mind. Either way will do. Hasn't it occurred to you that he might be able to disconnect it, render it harmless, and leave it there? I say that's an idea. No, it's not. You can't render that type of bomb harmless. It works on an air spring. The slightest move and it'll go. That is definitely a blower upper, not a leave it where it is. -a. Yes, but mind you, we Who could... Who is the expert here? Well, you are. Well, shut up, then. Come on and get cracking. Excuse me, Lieutenant. I thought you and your men might be hungry, so I've made a fresh bucket full of spotted dick. <laughs> Why, thank you very much. Don't take any. She'll be most upset if you take any. That's her breakfast. <laughs> Come on, Andy. We got down to the cellar and take a look. Oh, yes, splendors. Bill? 
Lash yourself to the bomb. Somebody's come to blow it up. Come, come away from that bomb. There's a good chap. I'm in command here. Lieutenant Humphrey Farnsworth, Royal Army Catering Corps. What are you going to do? Fry it? <laughs> <laughs> Put that man under close arrest, Sergeant. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm not in the army. Thank goodness for that. Now, let's have a look at this naughty little bomb. Mm. Yeah, yes, yes. Which is the bit that goes bang? <laughs> Over here. That bit there. You run a wire around it to about 200 yards away, press the plunger, she blows up and you can go home. I think we'll do that, eh, Juan? I protest most strongly. Can't just go around blowing up houses willy-nilly. It's dangerous. Mm, he's right, you know. The flying debris might hit somebody. We'll have to remove it and explode it elsewhere. That's my boy. Well done. All right, then. You don't want to blow the house up in case somebody gets hit by the bricks and stuff, right? That's right. All right, then. That's it, then. Knock the house down, cart the bricks away, then blow it up. Yes, I think you're right. I'll get the Pioneer Corps onto it right away. But this is illegal. The local authorities will have something to say about this. May I remind you I'm in charge here? Sergeant Lundra? Sir. Uh, did we bring a bulldozer with us? Yes, sir. Uh, knock this shack down, will you? <laughs> I can't look. Look at me mock Tudor Gable lying in the dust. Stand back. Oh, no. Not me asbestos conservatory with the imitation grapevine. <laughs> All these treasures lost to the nation forever. Well, that's it. They must the house. It didn't take long, did it? Half of it fell down when we took the front door off. <laughs> well... Now to detonate the bomb. Uh, Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Have you wired the bomb for detonation? Sir. Right. Stand back, everybody. Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Press the plunger, plunger. <laughs> hey, the tail's shot off. A bit of paper's fallen out. What does it say? Uh, um, uh, I think it's in French. He always says that if you give him anything to read, it's a cover-up. <laughs> give it to me. Oh, yes. How very interesting. So you've knocked my house down for this. What does it say? This bomb is the property of the BBC Television Scenery Department. Oh, of course. Don't you remember the man you bought the house from? He was a BBC producer. He did all those war plays. He must have brought it home as a souvenir or something. You've pulled my house down for a dummy bomb. I'll have the law on you. I say it's touchy, isn't it? <laughs> now, coming out on a cold night like this, no gratitude at all, some people. All right, Jeff, nothing more to do here. Put the arc lights on the lorry, right? Oh, like Hancock. Say, like, yeah. Look, boy, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I can see you're down and out. No money, nowhere to go. I'll give you 50 nickel for the land. It's no good to you without the house, and with the 50 nickel, you can find some digs, make a fresh start. Oh, it's very kind of you, Sid, and I do appreciate it. One only finds one's real friends in times of trouble. Is it a deal? Yes. Good boy. Fred? Yeah? Drive the cars in, boy. Here we are, Fred. The Sydney James Carmart. What a beautiful sight. 20,000 nickers worth of second-hand cars piled nose to nose. What a bit of luck they found that dummy bomb. Here, Sid. Was that dummy bomb like this one here? Oh, blimey, another one. That bloke must have been collecting him. <laughs> Got straight England Isle, Hitler. Are you sure it's a dummy, Sid? Of course it is. Unscrew the tail. You see the label inside. Here, Sid. Listen. <laughs> Run for it. Hello, Sid. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what a pity about all your cars, isn't it? <laughs> Go on. Yes, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Yes? Just for you, of course. Yes. A special favour, a friend. Yes, yes, yes. I'll give you 25 quid for the scrap metal. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. Very comical. Ah, ha, ha. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
That was Hancock's Half Hour, starring Tony Hancock with Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes and Kenneth Williams. Theme and incidental music composed and conducted by Wally Stott. The show written by Alan Simpson and Ray Galton. The program, which was recorded, was produced by Tom Ronald. Hancock's Half Hour from 1958. And there'll be another adventure for Hancock and Friends next week when Tony decides to open his own school. Be here for the opening day of Hancock's Academy for Young Gentlemen next week.